Hi everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Um, if you're new here, uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Daniel Pino and I am a longtime Access MVP. In today's video, um, it's the exact same demo database as the previous video, uh, but this time we're going to turn our attention to how can I track uh, who made a record and who last updated the record and of course when. This is something you see a lot in forums people are asking for. Today I'm presenting a simple approach. Um, this isn't going to be 100% granular. You're not going to be able to review histories. Um, it gives you uh, the latest and greatest. I will probably do another video with a more advanced logging system. But for today, this would meet the needs of a great many. So that's why I'm starting here. It's the simple version. So let's dive in. Let's see how this is done. So uh, basically for today's video, what we're going to be looking at is I want to track when somebody makes a new entry in a form. So therefore in a table, I want to know when that entry was made and by who. Furthermore, if somebody goes into that same record or any record and alters it, I want that to be logged. I want to know who is the last person that edited a record and when was it edited. This is can be very useful um, in a lot of cases I with clients where they want to know if the files, the records are up to date, accurate. Well, something like this would quickly allow you to take a glance and go, hey, the, you know, this record here hasn't been updated since 2003. There's a good chance it needs follow-up, things like that. It can also permit you to go in and say, whoa, whoa, something's wrong here and go, who was the last person that was in here playing with the, the database with the record? So basically, this is all a two-part system. You got the table, you got the uh, form, okay? So I'm using a contact table that actually comes from the create application parts uh, contacts. That's what I use to generate this demo database. So it's a table from Microsoft. And if we just dive in quickly, what I've done to it is I've added these four fields. This is what I'm using in this table as a simplified approach for tracking when a record was created, by whom it was created, when was it last modified, and then who last modified it. Um, so I added four fields to the table and basically you would do this to every table you want to add logging to. Then to log it, um, it's, it's not complicated. Um, I should also stop here for a second and just reverse course for two seconds. If we just look at an example of it, look at our table here, you'll see here the created by and the modified by are numbers and not names of individuals. Why is that? Because in my database, I have a user's table. Uh, it's a reference table and it avoids having to copy over and over names and it's just a numerical value, you know, best practice, normalization of data, all of that said. I actually use this in my databases as a, it's a security thing. So basically I'm able to authenticate, yes, you should have access to the database or not, depending on the username of the system or the username used to log in, things like that. Um, so as you can see, I also have this user table. And if you look, number one is cross-reference to my user, Daniel, right? If someone else logs in, uh, JP, well then he'd be assigned number two and Martin would get number three. So how does it work with the form? It is not complicated. Uh, let's just open up in design view. And if we look at our property sheet over to the right here in the events tab, you'll see that I am using a before update and a before insert event. Let's look at each of these. So before update, what am I doing? I'm checking to begin with if it's a new record because I don't want to save a modified or modified information, modified date, modified by who, if it's a new record. And for new records, I only want to store the created and created by. So I'm using this check, is it a new record? If it isn't, then I'm going to apply before an update occurs. I'm going to push out to the, the fields and the controls. I'm going to push out the value 
for the modified date time to be now. And the modified by, I'm using my two functions that we had seen previously. And we're going to recap in two seconds. But basically, get user, if you remember correctly, let's come down in the immediate window and open it up. Get username gives you the OS username of the currently logged in person. And the get user ID will take that Daniel and convert it over to the numerical representation from the user table, which is one. Um, so if we just quickly look at the functions, if you don't remember, uh, the get user is going to go get the username using my self healing object variable, which does a create object w script network. So just to demonstrate in case you aren't 100% familiar, but we could take that and from my function, take this for instance, and that would pull out the OS's username. So that's what this function does. It's just going and retrieving the name of the currently logged in person in Windows, which would be in my case, Daniel on my computer. The second function, the get user ID, expects a username, a string. So that's why I'm passing it here, the get username function, which returns Daniel, as we found out. So I'm passing Daniel to it. And it's performing a D lookup. In the user table, it's returning the user ID column value and it's applying the filter to bring back only one record, right? Where the username is going to equal the username I supply. So, in fact, here in my case today, right here on my machine, it's doing a search in this table for the line where the username equals Daniel, and it's returning its corresponding user ID of what? And that's it, that's all. So here it's taking Daniel, converting it over, and returning one. So here it gets the date timestamp, here it gets returned the ID number one, and it populates it before the update occurs, and so then the update includes that information. If we look at the before insert, so when someone's creating a new record and whatnot, then I'm using the me create field, and I'm doing the same thing now in the created by using the exact same function as I did with the before update. So between the two, I'm populating created and I'm populating modified. Let's take a look at this in practice because that literally is all the code there is to this. If we open the form, we're going to go to uh, a new record and we'll just create something. John, oops, John Smith. And we'll do save and close. So if we come here now and we look at the third entry, John Smith, and we scroll to the end, you will see now that I have a created date time stamp, which should correspond to right now, which it does, and a created by a value of one, which is me. Okay. Let's open this up again. We're going to go to that same record again. Let's make an edit. There we go, save and close if we want, save and new makes no difference. It has performed the update, and if we come and take a look at this entry again, we will now have in the modified column that it was modified once again today at 12.40 by user number one. Let's change this just for fun to two, just to prove a point. Let's come back a record. Let's go and Oops, I made a typo in the end. So let's just come here and remove this. And we're just going to wait just a couple seconds for it to flip over to 41 to make it easier to spot the change. Go save a new, just send the changes are committed. We now come back to our three and come to the end and you'll see it has been updated to 41 and the modified by which was two has been reverted back to one because I just performed a new update. So this is going to keep updating and it just stores the last modification. But in a lot of cases, this is what a lot of people want. It's something very simple and they can instantaneously tell who created which records and who modified which records when. And that is as easy and as complicated as it gets. You'll also see here, I put it in the form 
just for a visual representation and everything. But as you can see here, you can display this to your users if you want. Disable it so they can't mess with it. But then they can come in here and see instantaneously, okay, it was created by Daniel. It was last modified on the 15th at 1241. And now they don't, you know, you don't need queries and things like that. They can themselves see when things were updated and by whom. Um, obviously, if you want to get into more advanced automation, you can and uh, create reports and things like that. But I'm going to stop here for this video. This really is a simple, how can I track when something was created and when it was last updated and by whom? Um, so a couple very simple functions and two form events. I'm not, in this case, logging a deletion. Why? Because if you delete a record, there'd be nothing there to store the information. Um, typically, a deletion, in my experience, I don't delete records, right? I have active and inactive. And you could just as easily come in here, if you were to do that, add columns to your table for deletion or activation, whatever term you want to use. And then you could do, you know, after delete confirm event or something along those lines. And you could, you know, when that property changes, when you change the, the true to false for active, then you could also log the fact that who just did that action. So there are still other possibilities in there, depending what you want to do, but it's always the same principle. And as you saw, it's just a question of changing the field. But we're always using the same functions to identify the date and time and who made that change. So you can add in whatever events you want to add tracking to changes to fields and whatnot. And that's it, guys. Uh, like I said, very simple to do and implement a simple version of tracking who created and who modified records and when. And uh, I guess we'll stop here. Have a great day. Thank you very much for spending a couple minutes of your time. It'd be greatly appreciated if you could give a thumbs up, share, uh, spread the word, leave me some comments, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. 